Hey guys, Alex here from alexfigures.com and behind me I have 12 red light therapy panels and I've also got my Cornet electro smog meter in my hand. So that means I'm gonna be testing these panels to see how much EMF they're putting out. Yes, we're in round four and that means we're testing EMF figures. What I'm doing today with these panels is not only testing electric and magnetic fields at six inches, I've decided to also test them at three inches. If you have watched my 2019 body panel comparison, I only did my testing at six inches. I was gonna do that again today with these panels, just doing six inch testing, but what I found after doing a lot of testing and reviewing of these panels is the panels are so much better now from an EMF point of view. Back in 2019, we were getting some pretty high EMF readings. Uh, so there's no need to go into six inches because obviously they're only gonna get worse the closer you are to the panel. But now with these new generation panels coming out, a lot of the readings at six inches are pretty much rock bottom, which makes it hard to compare and hard to decide which ones are the best, right? But what I've also noticed, not only from my own personal use of these panels, but from talking to other people and seeing other videos and that, most people don't stand six inches from a panel. A lot of people stand a lot closer. The six inch rule is, is what panels recommended and typically what they were testing their radiance figures. And, but in reality, a lot of people stand a lot closer. I know some people that go right up against the panels. So thus, it made sense to test at three inches as well. So what I've done now is tested all of these panels using my uh, Cornet EMF meter, and I've tested magnetic and electric fields at both six and three inches. Now you might be thinking, well, what about microwave? Well, there's only one panel behind me that has microwave Wi-Fi function, or sorry, Bluetooth function, um, and we'll talk about that when we get there. So there was no need to test it on the rest. If you haven't seen any of the other previous videos, I'll put links to them below. If you wanna know more about any of these panels behind me, I'll also put links to the reviews I've done and to the product page. And if you wanna buy any of these, be sure to use discount code Alex. It will save you anything from $25 through to 15%. I've tested all of these panels using the panel supplied power cable, all right? Some cables that come with these panels are really thick, heavy duty uh, cables. Other cables are quite thin, all right? So, all right, so I use the cable that has come with the panel for the EMF testing. I also plug it directly into the power point in the wall. No extension cords, nothing like that. So what that means is I've actually had to go and do all the testing on these panels inside because at the moment I don't have power where I am at the moment. I have to use big extension cords, right? So I wanted to make sure I get the most accurate readings possible. I've tested all of these inside. Yes, it took me forever. Um, but I've got tons of data points now and I can rank these panels from best to worst. Well, from worst to best. In regards to ranking, because we do have so many data points, we've got three inches and six inches, and we have electric fields and magnetic fields. I've actually ranked the electric fields first. So any panels that had a high or dangerous electric ranking have been are automatically on the bottom, right? Then I use the magnetic scores after that. I'm gonna be rattling off a bunch of numbers, and most of these figures are gonna be in micro Teslas. Now, to make it easier for you, this meter of mine is programmed to the building biology health standards, EMF health standards. And what it does is, is when it detects a reading, it codes it green being safe, yellow being, hey, cautious, and red being, yeah, this is dangerous, try and minimize exposure. So when I'm rattling off the numbers, I'll say whether they're green, safe, orange, cautious, or red, dangerous. Okay, in last place, with the worst EMF scores out of all these panels I've tested was the Red Rush 720 Classic. Now this is quite an old panel. And like I said earlier, back in 2019, a lot of the panels didn't have the best EMF readings. So it doesn't surprise me that this is in last place. Unfortunately, it's quite bad from an EMF point of view. At three inches, we had a, a really high electric field coming off this panel. Uh, in fact, it was up in the red range, which means, yeah, you really want to limit yourself, uh, limit exposure to this. So if you do have this panel or if you are thinking of buying this panel, don't get too close to it. Stand out at six inches or, or even further. Even at six inches, though, we were getting an orange reading for both electric and magnetic fields. So, yeah, not the greatest. I don't want to spend too much time on the, on the panels that have scored badly. I rather want to, instead I want to get through all the data and tell you which, what panels are the best. By the way, I should mention, if you do want to geek out on the data, I'll publish some of it in this video, but all of it can be seen in my red light therapy data sheet link below, or head over to alexfigures.com and I'll be converting this whole video series into a blog with all the data points over there as well. Now in 11th place was the Juve Solo 3.0. 
Now what's interesting here is this had a really, really good magnetic reading, which is, um, in fact, it was one of the best from a magnetic point of view, but it had a really bad, really high electric field coming off it. The reason is they, they don't use a grounding pin in their plugs. It was the first thing I noticed when I got this juve like many months ago. I was like, there's no grounding pin. In fact, I was so concerned about it, I actually tried to use another cable from another panel because I didn't want to expose myself to the, the harmful electric fields that would be coming off it. But the other cables didn't work. Juve used their own standard special cable. So I don't know. I, I really don't know why they've done that. It's I know when they transitioned from their Juve 2.0 to the new 3.0, they've changed manufacturing plants. Like now they're making these panels in Malaysia. But it's it's seriously such a simple engineering fix to add that grounding pin. And that's why you're getting such a high electric field on it. Even though the Juve has a really good magnetic score, because of the electric field, they come in 11th place, which really is unfortunate for Juve and for any Juve users out there because to be honest, it's really just a bit of an oversight. All right, so that leaves 10 panels. Now, all of these panels had no detectable electric fields at both three inches or six inches, which is great. So that means from first through to 10th, we're ranking purely on magnetic readings. Now, magnetic readings are very hard to shield, but these companies have come a long way compared to 2019. All of the readings here are, are pretty good. Um, none of them are in the red, which is great, uh, and most of them at th uh, six inches are perfectly fine. It's only when you get close to three inches. All right, let's start working from the bottom up. In 10th place, we have the LightPath LED. Now, this had a reading of 0.52 micro Teslas, which is in the orange, at three inches. It is on the higher side. Uh, but again, at least it's not red. In ninth place, we had the Blue Blocks Hive Max, and that had a three inch reading of 0.4 micro Teslas, again in the orange. In eighth place, we had the Solbasium Optics 180, a micro Tesla score of 0.34. In seventh place, we had the Rug Pro, micro Tesla rating of 0.32. In sixth place, the Sido LED Triple X with a rating of 0.3 micro Teslas. In fifth place, the Infrared e Max with a reading of 0.28 micro Teslas, still in the orange. In fourth place, we had the Red Light Rising Advantage 900 with a reading of 0.23 micro Teslas in the orange. All right, so now there's only three left. Now I can say all three of these had no detectable magnetic field at six inches. It was only when we got close to three inches that we noticed something, all right? So they've all done exceptionally well. Um, but one of them is better than the rest. So we actually have two panels sharing second place. One of them is the Gemberred Reboot. This had a reading of 0.22 micro Teslas at three inches. And the other one in second place was the Platinum LED Biomax 600. This had the same 0.22 micro Tesla score at three inches. Remember at six inches, there was no detectable reading. So that's great. So that leaves the Mito Red Mito Pro 1500. Now, this had a reading of 0.12 micro Teslas. Anything under 0.1, I consider no reading, right? I consider that just nil. This was very, very, very close to being no detectable EMF at both electric three inches and six inches and magnetic three inches and six inches, which is quite amazing. And that's why it's number one. And the funny thing is the Red Mito Pro has uh, won a few rounds now. So it is rapidly becoming the uh, panel to beat here in the 2021 body panel comparison series. Out of all of these panels behind me though, there's one that I'd say, look, be very, very careful with, and that is the Red Rush because of its high electric reading. The Juve is concerning even at six inches, so you probably don't wanna to get too close to it. You definitely, definitely don't wanna lean up against it. Uh, and then maybe the Light Path LED, it did have a higher magnetic reading at three inches. Once you pass that though, Maybe the top eight, you could also add the Blue Blocks Hive Max with a 0.4 reading. The top eight though, all those other panels are all pretty safe. Like seriously, I wouldn't be concerned myself using them. I wouldn't be worried about my wife using them. If she was say pregnant or my two year old boy was gonna go near one of them, then yeah, maybe I would be limiting it to those top two or three panels. But otherwise, for most people, they're all pretty good. Now that we've ranked all those panels, what we can do is we can update our, our scoreboard and see how these panels are looking overall. All right, so first things first, Infrared has dropped from first place to third place. 
The Biomax has taken first place again, and yes, the Mito Pro is in second. So it is very, very close at the top there. Two or three points separating the top three panels. And then there's a big gap. So we've got the Infrared Max on 39 points in third place. And then fourth place, the Solbasium Optics 180 and the Light Path LED panel uh, they are in fourth equal. They're on um, 26 points each. So there's a big gap opening up in those front three, which is really exciting because we always knew the Mito Mito Pro and the Biomax panels were going to do well, right? They're just, they're just exceptional panels. I mean, they both took out first and second in 2019, and um, the new panels that they released are awesome, and the price is great. But the Infrared Max, I have to admit, is a, is a surprise for me. Um, well, I didn't know too much about it, though there is a lot of interest in the space. So, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be as surprised. When we look in the middle there, it's still very close. Uh, fourth place, 26 points, all the way down to you know eighth place. There's only five points separating fourth and uh, eighth position. And it's good to see that the red light rising advantage 900, um, it placed fourth in that EMF round. So it has got a bunch of points, but it is still sitting on the bottom. What is surprising though is the Juve Solo is um, is taking a massive hit after its poor EMF performance and it's in 11th place, second to last. All right guys, that's it for this round. If you've enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them below. If you want to buy any of these panels, be sure to use discount code Alex. It helps me, plus you get a savings. And yeah, be sure to subscribe because the next video coming out is on LEDs, wavelengths, and um, pulsing. So I'll see you soon, bye.